what we do here is go back, 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 back. back. How you all doing guys, Brandon here. Welcome to Retro Dodo. It has finally landed in our office. This is the RG350, a very, very anticipated handheld that the uh, retro gaming community have wanted for a while now, but it's officially out. Unfortunately, they've only released about 60 units, but lucky for you, we're actually giving away this handheld right here over on our Twitter. So there is links below. All you have to do is retweet and follow. So get over there if you wanna win this handheld. If you want to actually pick one up, it comes in for around about 80 to $90. So the RG350 here is an upgraded, newer version of this, the RG300, which we stated was one of our favorite $50 handhelds. But this here, I think, I have yet to look at it, could be one of our favorite uh, $100 handhelds. And it has the new Pocket Go coming out soon, which will compete with it. So that will be a very cool video that we will be doing. So here's the packaging. You know, I want slightly uh, more premium packaging from these guys. This is very, I don't want to be offensive, but a cheap Chinese, you know, classic packaging on this thing. I know they want to keep their profits up, but I really do think if they made a more premium packaging, a lot more people would pick it up and it would look better on shelves as well. So we have the gray version, which looks like the DMG. On the side here, we've got some... Um, Specs, it's a 3.5 inch screen with the resolution of 320 by 240 and it is a full IPS screen and it also has tempered glass on the front as well, which is very nice. It's using the GZ4770 processor of one gigahertz and it has 512 megabyte RAM, which is a slightly quicker uh, one compared to the RG300. So people reckon it might be able to play PS1 emulation slightly better, but we will be testing that. Um, and a built-in capacity of a 16 gigabyte TF card. Um, are they saying that comes with? It might come with it, you never know. Stereo speakers, a 2500 milliamp battery, blah, 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 and uh, type C, so USB type C charging. I just wanna open it up because I am excited. That's new, okay, that they didn't do that in the uh, RG3. Oh, oh I'm, I am so bloody excited right now. I've been writing about this and reading stuff about it for a while now, and it's just nice to get hold of it. So let's put that to the side. You get your analog cables here. You get your USB charging cable, and there is no TF card in there, so I don't know what they were... Uh, writing about on there. I think it just means they've got a slot for it. Now, those of you wondering how do you install the games, they legally can't put games preloaded on this on an SD card, so you have to do it yourselves. There is an article in the link below if you are interested in downloading ROMs, but I do warn you, it's not legal, so I'm staying out of that. All right, here we go. Here is the RG350. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, 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 bloody hell, guys. I'm actually quite impressed. So this feels like the Nintendo Switch Lite. The buttons are a lot more clicky. Like, I hated these buttons. If you remember in my review, I said the buttons made me physically sick. And they've learnt from it, which I absolutely love. They've got some uh, much clickier buttons now. I'm liking that. And these analog sticks... All right, yeah, they're good. Wow, they are... I don't know what they've done here, but they've seriously upped their... Uh... All right, I just... And these triggers feel like the 3DS, which is quite nice. So let's go around. Obviously, on the front here, you have your A, B, X, Y, your start, select. You have two analog sticks, which is very nice. You've got your D-pad here. And all of these are quite raised. You can't really see it but these are raised quite a bit out of the console, which I really do like. Jesus, guys, I'm actually quite impressed. These things are getting better and better every time they come out. You get two USB-C ports. Not 100% sure why. Maybe it's to connect up um, controllers, but obviously you can charge it through there. You get a HDMI port and your AV port as well. At the bottom, your two stereo speakers, your power on, your volume rocker, and a reset button, as well as your TF card slot. I am liking this gray version. All right, let's turn this on. I do have my SD card over here. Now, comparing it to the RG300 here, you know, these are some two great looking handhelds apart from the ABX-Y on the 
RG300. But guys, I don't know how to, like, it feels like the Nintendo Switch. It's got that matte finish to it, which is quite nice. The buttons are responsive. The analog sticks do kind of feel like a Switch as well. Very, you know, well-built analog sticks, to be fair with you. Okay, so if we zoom in, I'll try and pop up the brightness here. Let me just quickly do that. You get your applications, which is your basic stuff, and then you get your emulation, so you can go through consoles. It looks like it's got the, the NES, the Wonderswan, the Game Boy, the PlayStation 1, Sega Mega Drive, Game Boy Advance, you know, Neo Geo and stuff. So let's, uh, let's put in an SD card with some built-in ROMs, and let's play. I want to play some Game Boy. I want to play some NES, and I want to play some PlayStation. So we're going to test these out now. Oh, that is a big screen. Straight off the bat, that is a big screen. So if you're fed up with the small, like, I think this is 2.5 inch screen on these ones, on the RG300, you are gonna love this. So your Y button goes to your save states, your load states and stuff. You've pressed B, you've come out of it. That's X. Analog stick doesn't seem to wanna work on here because it is a Game Boy Color emulation. No frame rate drops as of yet. Like this is running silky smooth. Level one done. All right. 1% complete. Oh. Oh no. So there you have it, a look at some Game Boy Color emulation. That is running perfect. 100% quite impressed with that. And if I wanted to save, I could go down to save state and you've saved it if you want to load state. All right, shall we try some NES? What should we play on here? Mega Man 2, should we give Mega Man 2 a go? Okay, so here's Mega Man. I've got the frame rate at the top right there. Do all the buttons work? So the D-pad works. Analog stick, no. Oh, looks like down is how you get to the emulation. You can load ROM, uh, save state, load state. You can go into settings if you want. You know, change the video and sound settings around. Uh, but let's keep an eye on that frame rate. Really good emulation on here, actually. Ow. It's, look, it's running perfectly. All right, let's try another one. So if you go, we can come out, exit. All right, so it looked like Nez ran pretty perfectly, in my personal opinion. We got the Genesis, we try out some Genesis stuff. Analog sticks working. How do I get to the menu? It's got a speed button if you need that. How do I get to, there we go. Okay, is there any way of showing the frame, show frame rate, there you go. Clean 60. You 
you know this is expected from the Sega Master System. It's not a, it's not a heavy game to play, but uh, I'm just showing you some gameplay so you can take uh, you can take it in. But you know it's not dropping b below 60, which is always nice. All right, let's uh let's get out of this. And uh, I know what you're all waiting for. Let's try out the PlayStation emulation. Now this is where I get a little strict with it because they keep saying they can play it, but apparently this can. And like quite well. So, you know, the games that I've got loaded now are quite large games. So, like Crash Bandicoot Warp, that's a big game. Spyro the Dragon is quite big. Should we try, let's try Croc Legend of the Gobo. Uh, see how this performs. Now the frame rate is at the top there so we can see. Even just playing on this in, is, is incredibly comfortable. I'm kind of impressed what they've done. I don't like the whole like Anbernic logo below. I know it's the guys who made it, but I would have liked it, you know, something different there. Um, but in terms of build quality, this is really, really good. I'm digging it. The audio seems great. So uh, let's let's just jump in and see see what this the frame rate does here. Like this is I can already see just from the menu. This is running a lot smoother than any of the other handhelds I've tried. This could be it. This could be the handheld that can play PlayStation 1 ROMs well. And if that's the case, this could be up there with one of the best handhelds of the year. But uh, that's a big statement from us. Obviously, we'll wait for the... Oh my god. It's running well. Oh my god. Analog stick doesn't work, which is, you know, on a PlayStation ROM, that's completely fine. Look at this, guys. It's running. Pop! Got him. Running quite well. This is exciting. Audio's good. Shoulder buttons are working. I'm very impressed with how that run. I know it's the first level on that, but like, look at it. It's running at a clean 50 frames. Like, I'll be, I'll admit, like I'm probably like your average consumer, which it doesn't really bother me if there's a couple of frame rate drops, but there isn't even any frame rate drops. All right, let's try out, let's try out Spyro. I know that's what you, you, that will that will put it to the test. Oh my god. This could be this could be the handheld that I use constantly. So how do I get out of this menu? There you go. So if you press start and select, you can load, you can change your settings. But I want to come out of this. Let's try Crash Bandicoot. This will put it to the test. Okay, so we're in Crash Bandicoot and oh my god. I'm not going to speak too soon. Let's jump right in. Frame rate staying solid. It's using about 50% of the CPU. Alright, come on. Show us what, what you got. No way, no way, no way. I should have jumped on that one. No way. Oh my, I'm so happy this is actually like 100% playable, the rest the rest of the handhelds that I reviewed have been just, you know, pretty bad when it comes to PlayStation emulation. But this thing, like, it's not perfect. There's a little tiny bit of screen tearing and a, you know, a couple of frame rate drops. But there's only been a couple since I started. Guys, this is, this is really good. Like playing this is. 
100% playable and actually quite fun. I think they've done it. I think they've done it. Look at that, it's not even dropping from 50 frames. Not even a bit. The audio is pretty good as well, like, it, it, they're not the best of speakers in here, you know, but it's... There's a little frame rate drop then, I saw that. I'm impressed. And I just died, but... Oh, it's kissing me. Oh, God, alright, just turn me into the prince. And you can save, so we go down here, save state, empty slot one, bang. Alright, so, you know... This is just simply an unboxing and me showing you my first impressions, but guys, I am very, very impressed with what they've done here. This handheld is without doubt a lot better than all the other handhelds I reviewed. The LDK, the BitBoy Pocket Go, so far this is blowing them out of the water. Now, off the bat, what you're going to notice when you pick this up build quality. It's pretty good. It's not best, you know, it's not made out of metal, but you can tell they've put some money behind this and uh, increased the build quality without a doubt. The analog sticks feel great. The buttons are probably my, one of my favorite features. These things are like super, super bouncy. They're a lot better than the other crap they put in the RG300. The D-pad's good. You know, the, the only downfall about this is that it doesn't play N64 ROMs. Now, if it did, that could be seriously you know, seriously impressive for this little thing, but I just don't think it's got uh, the power needed uh, to, to to power N64 games, unfortunately. But you never know. I wouldn't be surprised if they come out with that in, in 2020 because they update these things a lot. So there you have it, an unboxing uh, and a, you know, first impressions of the, the Retro Game 350 here. I 100% think you should pick this up. It is a little pricey, but this is going to be something that can play your PlayStation ROMs very, very well, and all of your other ROMs as well. Um, Game Boy, you know, playing Pokemon on here is going to be an absolute blast. Now, you know, it, it's a lot cheaper than a Nintendo Switch, and it's definitely something that, you, you know, is. I'm not going to compare it to the Nintendo Switch, but this is something that you can definitely give someone as a gift who's into games uh, that can play all of their old school, you know, Nintendo games on the Game Boy and stuff if need be. So definitely a great gift for Christmas to treat yourself or to give someone else. And don't forget, we are doing a giveaway over on Twitter for this exact handheld. So go over there, retweet and follow, and you'll be entered. And hopefully I'll get this to you uh, way before Christmas so you can play that. So there you have it guys, thank you again for checking out this video, there will be a full written review on the site in a few days once I test the battery life and some other, uh, other ROMs. I might even do a full review on it coming up, but I will definitely be doing a comparison to the upcoming BitBoy Pocket Go version 2 that BitBoy have uh, revealed, which could be coming out next, or this month, so in October. Um, so there you have it, if you enjoyed this video please do subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.